Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the proper way to practice and shadow swing a topspin forehand. Now, I've got the Topspin Pro here. You know what to do. Check out my affiliate link in the description below. I'll even pin it in the first comment. It would mean the world to me if you got the Topspin Pro for at-home practice using my affiliate link, so thank you so much. So I want you to imagine while you're shadow swinging that you are adding ingredients to a bowl making chocolate cake. You're adding one ingredient at a time, and at the end, you finally have this delicious cake. Do the same thing when it comes to shadow swinging. Work on one idea and progress through it until the end, it's an amazing shot. So in this couple minute video, I'm gonna work on shadow swinging, but I'm gonna add parts to it. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna do my footwork. So I'm gonna move my feet, and then split step. You'll see I'm in a great ready position. My elbows are out away from me. My racket's up in front of me. Feet moving, split, right? So you should be doing this. You should be practicing. Move the feet, split step. Very few players ever practice this. You know, they're, they're really good at standing still, hitting the ball, but you gotta do what the pros do. They hit the ball, they move their feet, and then they split step. They hit the ball, they move their feet, and then they split step. So practice that. Work on the first idea get the feet moving correctly. The next thing is to turn correctly. When the ball comes off your opponent's racket, you should begin turning your body and taking the racket back with both hands. When I do this, I'm still gonna move my feet. Feet moving, split, I turn, showing you the back of my front shoulder. Footwork, split, turn with both hands. Now I'm gonna add dropping the racket, and as I drop my racket, I'm gonna tilt my strings down, and I'm gonna move my non-hitting hand forward, keeping it above waist level. I want you to imagine I am playing tennis in weight, I'm sorry, like hip high water. If I were playing tennis in hip high water, my racket goes down in the water, but I'm keeping my non-hitting hand, my left hand dry. You want your non-hitting hand to move forward as the racket's going down. That will start initiating the turn. So we want the non-hitting hand to go forward, the racket to go down. So I add the next ingredients, right? Feet moving, split, I turn, and then I drop. And as I am dropping my racket, I can drop my body lower below the ball, racket's closed, and I'm reaching out forward, keeping my left hand dry out of the water. The next idea, rotating the body, and while I'm brushing and spinning the ball, which you can see the ball spin on the Topspin Pro, I'm waving to the opponent. It's a really important concept. When you're striking the ball, you need your non-hitting hand higher than contact. You don't want your non-hitting hand below contact. Let's say you send me a video of someone hitting a forehand. And all you do is, actually you don't send me a video, you send me a picture of someone hitting a forehand. And all I see is their contact. One of the ways I determine what level of play they are is the height of their non-hitting hand. If their non-hitting hand is down, usually a lower level player. If their non-hitting hand is up, it's usually a higher level player. If you're someone who has the arm down, it typically means you have a tough time turning your hips. So make sure that you are waving to the opponent with your non-hitting hand higher than contact, and that'll ensure that you can turn your hips and that the arm isn't dropping, which impedes hip turn. So feet moving, I split, I turn with both hands, I drop and I stop at contact and wave to the camera. This is how you slowly but surely make chocolate cake. We're just trying to understand the process. This is how you shadow swing the right way, with thought, in a way that makes a difference when you play. You know what you're trying to do at each moment in the stroke. Here's the next idea, and I'm gonna choke up on my racket so I don't put a hole in my, my ceiling here in the basement. After contact, what I want you to do is I want you to catch the racket right away. Don't go off to the side. Try to go up and catch the racket above contact. Here's why. Tennis is a lifting game. Tennis is a game of going up as you're hitting the ball. What we're not trying to do right now with this por portion of the swing, we're not trying to be right, we're trying to be helpful. There is a difference between being right and being helpful. As a, an illustration of this, if you have a friend who's always 30 minutes late, 
to everything, you know, parties and work and whatever, if they're always 30 minutes late and you know this and you hear that they have a meeting with their boss and you ask someone else, hey, what time is my friend's meeting with his boss? Oh, two o'clock? And then your friend says, hey, what time's the meeting? You go, 1.30. Were you right? No. Were you helpful? Absolutely. My goal is to not be right because I don't care about me. I care about you and I want to be helpful. And I know that if you attempt this, you won't be doing this, which is the over-rotating a cross type of swing that absolutely kills consistency and depth. It kills your ability to go forward after you hit because your body weight's going so far to the side. So try on your forehand catching the moment you hit the ball, but go up as you're doing it, not across. And when you do that, the amount of depth and height and spin you get is tremendous. So I'm gonna stop right after I hit the ball. Catching the racket. Just hit the ceiling, I forgot to choke up. And now I'm gonna add the finish, where my racket goes over my shoulder. You'll notice my elbows are visible to the camera. I'm not doing bicep curls as I hit the ball. I'm going up and I'm finishing high with my armpits exposed. If you start going up, but then your finish is down here, Guess what happens? If this is point A, and this is point B, and this is point C, after a while your brain goes, you know what, let's just go to point C. I want you to go up, and the way to ensure that you go up is to keep the racket up. You look at Nadal, and his racket goes like this all the time. He's got a pretty good forehand. So I want you going up and catching the racket the way you see Dominic Team do in practice. Venus and Serena do this all the time. So now I can, because I pieced it all together, I put all the ingredients in the bowl to make this chocolate cake. Now, since I systematically added one ingredient at a time, I can do it, and you can do it at a pretty fast speed. I can do it in a way that's actually going to make a difference in the way I play. So again, I'm gonna choke up again so I don't hit the ceiling. If you're home practicing on your Top Spin Pro, practicing all of the things you just learned, and your opponent is just sitting home, eating Doritos, drinking Coke, <laughs> who do you think's gonna win? Who do you think is making a positive impact in their game? The person not shadow swinging and not working on their game, or the person who is? This doesn't mean don't go out and practice. <laughs> it's not what it means. Shadow swinging, the Topspin Pro, it is not a replacement of on-court practice. It is a supplement to on-court practice. Work on your forehand. Get a Topspin Pro. Description below, my link. Work on the footwork, work on the turn, work on the drop, work on the contact, the extension and the finish. Film yourself when you're shadow swinging. If you go out and play, and you see that your playing forehand doesn't look exactly the way your shadow swing forehand looks, that's okay. It's not going to look the same. No different than a child learning the alphabet and how to write all the letters. That's not how they write for the rest of their life, but you gotta start somewhere. And if you have the skeleton and the basic bones of the, of the str swing structure solid and printed in your mind, it will make a positive impact in the way you actually hit a forehand. You use this advice on your shadow swing, there is no doubt. You're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.